in just a moment. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Come live in just a second. There we go. How's it going, Hacksters? Welcome to Friday. It's a glorious day. Um, just getting dark here in SF, and we have a new package in the office that I'm very excited about because this is something that I actually ordered because I've tried to get my hands on some of these for ages and it just hasn't worked out. So, I straight up bought some from Crowd Supply. Uh, this is the FOMU. It is a, well, okay, so this, this is a Tomu, the predecessor, which we're gonna look at right now. So Tomu is, uh, was originally Tim's open <laughs> micro USB, I think. Uh, a little tiny, ridiculously small board that fits inside of your USB port. This is just a little USB extension. The actual board is what you see sticking out here. It's got a couple, a green LED, a red LED, and then two little capacitive touch buttons that you can touch and stuff. And it, it's just, it's this big. It's this big. Look at that. It's basically all USB. Um, and then you plug it in and it does that. But you can program this to like do whatever you want. Uh, there's all kinds of different versions now. We've got the Somu, the security Tomu that I talked about a little while ago. We've got the Womu, the wireless Tomu. Uh, these are all made by like a bunch of different people. Uh, so for example, the Fomu is made by Kosagi and is being like a lot of software is being written for it by Sean Cross. Um, then we have, yeah, a couple of Femto ones, including the Bluetooth Tomu, all kinds of cool stuff. And um, you can ask for which one you should get and stuff. Uh, in this case, if you want to play with FPGAs, you get the FOMU. So, what's the deal with these? Uh, you can watch the presentation about them. You can also just go straight to the Crowd Supply page. Uh, I recommend starting by looking at the Tomu. This is an arm board that fits inside the USB connector. It's the one that I was just showing you with the red and green LEDs. Uh, it's been covered on Hackster, of course, ages ago. This came out a long time ago by this point, um, years. And yeah, uh, you can use it to create your own two-factor authentication token. Even if you don't have the Somu one, you can use this to do the same thing. Um, if you want to figure out how to do that, you can join the online discussion list forum thingy, which is linked not only at the bottom of the Tomu page on Crowd Supply, but also, hey, no, nah, nah, not right now, not right now. Um, but yeah, you can also look at the GitHub, I'm Tomu. This includes stuff for a bunch of the different ones. So for example, this FOMU workshop that we'll look at a minute in a minute, and then also the FOMU hardware. Uh, yes, these are totally open source, it's fantastic. Uh, and there's a quick start under the, uh, for the Tomu on the GitHub page. Very delightful. And then also our own uh, blog contributor, Whitney Knitter, has also written up a guide on GUI-less development with the Tomu, a brief introduction to GUI-less ARM uh, development with the Tomu board. Fantastic. Look how small it is. It's so small. Ugh. And she has some cool ideas to do with it too. Which brings us back to the FOMU. There's also an article on this on the Hackster page by Alistair Allen from about a year ago when this first came out. As I said, I've been trying to get my hands on it for a while. Um, I keep running into Tim at various things and just did not. <sighs> so um, you can read Alistair's blog post about it, which I have linked in the description to the video. And uh, it describes the, the ICE-40 lattice chip that this is running on with 5,000 lookup tables and DSP tiles. I'm assuming that DSP here means digital signal processing because that's one of the things that FPGAs are great at is that if you have, for example, one kind of a signal and you want to modify it, process it in some way, extract information, um, if you wanted to do, I think maybe you could do like audio pedals and stuff with this which would be really cool. Uh, oh, that'd be so cool. Um, I need to, to calm the brain weasels for a moment. <laughs> There's so many possibilities here. Um, but also you can use them for things like um, transcoding, 
different, for example, one type of image to another, one type of video to another, one type of audio to another. Uh, FPGAs are really good at doing this kind of thing in parallel, it's just kind of a mindless this becomes that, this becomes that, etc. Um, with 128k of RAM, uh, kilobytes of RAM, and 2 megabytes of flash, and a single RGB LED, so this one is different in that way. But you do still have two capacitive touch buttons, and it still fits inside of your USB port. Uh, you can find out much more about this on the article, there's a bunch of cool uh, links here, but one of the mo main interesting things here for me is that, well, A, it's capable of running a soft RISC-V core. RISC-V is an open ISA uh, instruction set architecture, um, which makes it awesome. And also you can run MicroPython on it. Yeah! And according to Tom Tim, actually, there is now a way of, at least in development, of running CircuitPython on there. That's kind of old news now, so I hope that it's okay to say. <laughs> uh, there is an FPGA Tomu workshop, like I, we saw in the GitHub a minute ago, the FOMU workshop. I think this is the same, like here's some support files here. Or you can just go to workshop.fomu.im slash n slash latest, whatever. Um, those parts are probably optional. And then finally, also, there's Renode, which is a thing that will enable you to run sort of a virtual version of FOMU. Uh, and that information is also linked in the description. Um, yeah, you can sort of virtualize it and pretend you have a FOMU even when you don't. Cool. It says, well, it says for the hardware part, you need to have the FOMU board. I'm not sure exactly how this works. Someone who knows better what Reno does um, would be better able to tell you what exactly this does. But apparently it's exciting for software people. <laughs> uh, I don't claim to be an expert here. It gets a little bit into the woods in terms of what I particularly know. But let's get this package open, because I've been yammering a bunch and we haven't even looked at the thing yet. So let's get this. Up. We looked at the Tomu, which is its sort of old elder sibling. Uh, I can't open this with my... Can I do this with my bare hands? Yeah! Ah. Brute force! Yeah! Here's this guy still flashing away. I want to reprogram that, but uh, there's so much stuff to do! I've been playing around with d3.js. Uh, actually, you know, this is what I assume is in this box. It's quite possible there's something else in here entirely. In which case, I will be embarrassed, but we'll still have learned something about FOMU. No, here they are. Okay, cool. Uh, one cool thing about this in uh, Crowd Supply is that you can buy multiple of them at a time in a little bundle. It's a little bit cheaper, I think. So I got two. And they come with their little cases. Ah, cool. So uh, right off the bat, um, they come in a bare PCB form. Well, they've got, they're assembled in that they have the components and stuff on them. Let's get some focus up here. Uh, but they are bare in that it's just a PCB. And so what we need to do is apply this little plastic case thingy that basically protects and shields these components and makes it so that it plugs better into your USB port. Look at this guy, it's so pretty. And since it's on like a half height PCB, it's even thinner and even more sort of Oh, wow. That's just lovely. Where's the uh, FPGA on there? Oh, it's so small! <laughs> I'm assuming it's a, that little square chip in the middle. Where's my, uh, here's my loop. Loop-de-loop. -loop. Ah! Before I put the case on here, I want to... Oh, that's terrible. Let's clean that off. Oh, that's right. We had uh, some remodeling happening in here and uh, renovation and they painted a bunch of stuff and sent down a bunch of wood chips and things. So let's have a better look at this. <laughs> Can we get some light on here? Eh, it's not really working super great. It's so sm The writing on here is so small. I used to have an LED in here, but the battery ran out. Oh, yeah, it's really dim. What does it say on the chip here? It says, oh, that's so small. 
I almost need my macro. Oh yeah, IS40, UPS, WG, something, something, something. Taiwan. Wow. Well, this is the smallest thing I've tried to read in a long time, but look at that, it's so pretty. Let's put the case on. And I don't have my computer set up to run this stuff yet. I just got excited to because the, the package came and I wanted to share, ah, to share. Uh, but let's get this. Obviously you want the USB contacts to be exposed. Once you push this into the case, you can't really take it out without damaging it. So be sure that you're ready to. I've got another one, so that's fine. There's really no reason to use it without the case on, honestly. Like, there. I mean, I'm sure some people can come up with a weird creative reason not to put the case on, but yeah, it's your choice anyway. You get the FOMU in the mail, you choose what to do with it, you can put the case on, you can not put the case on for your own weird reasons. Uh, but yeah, this enables you to plug it in, and let's see if it does anything right off the bat. And I have basically no fingernails right now, and that was still really easy, so... Ooh, look at that. Cyan. Love it. Of course I love it. <laughs> A little breathing animation. That's really lovely. All right, so at least it'll be easy to tell which one you have. Oh, I wonder if the button does anything right now. Not really. kind of stuck in there. Come out. Ah! Well, ooh! <laughs> cool. So my FOMU is blue, my TOMU is green, and now I have more fun stuff to play with. It says TOMU.IM FPGA on there. How useful. What does it say on the top? Can't tell. But yeah. Check these out. Uh, you can always look at the links in the description of the video for more info uh, above and beyond the pages that we looked at just now. And uh, yeah, get you some and play with them. I filmed a couple of interviews today in other news, so check out the channel next week for uh, exciting chats, let's say, with the Matrix Labs team and also Odd J about his new companion robot. Can't wait to share those! Oh, have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Hack on!